Check it out. This is Marco Polo, Brooklyn, Toronto, and right now you're watching Outside the Booth on DJ Booth TV. Shouts to Z. You're watching Outside the Booth on DJ Booth TV. Shouts to Erickson Cornell behind the lens, and I am with Marco Polo. Peace, peace. What up, man? Chilling, man. You good? I'm good. I'm great. I'm great. Excellent. You know, in wonderful Fort Greene, Brooklyn. Yes. And this is Studio A, right? I like to refer to this as Studio A. As Studio B is over there, aka my bedroom. <laughs> we track the vocals, and all the magic happens. A lot of people don't know that. Pretty much, you actually had an interesting quote that it doesn't matter how expensive your equipment is, it matters on what you do with it. And the majority of his production really takes place in here, in his home studio. Now tell me, what was, what was the idea behind making this your home base and not having to leave to, to really get things done? Uh, as a necessity, I, when I first moved to New York 12 years ago, I was in Queens, and then, like I said, I was telling you before, I moved here because my roommate had an extra room, and it just worked out. He does music, I do music, and this became a dedicated room to making music. Mm -hmm. And really, it had the energy that I needed. Like, it's, you know, I'm in Brooklyn, I'm in New York, the birthplace of hip-hop, um, and it's, it's perfect, you know what I'm saying? I look out the window every day, and I see buildings in the clock tower, yeah. and... Uh, it, it's perfect. I feel like you kind of got here, like you mentioned you've been here for 12 years, you kind of got here at like the perfect time, you know, the, the, the neighborhood is, per is is ripe. How do your neighbors deal with, you know, you having this <laughs> boom bap, boom bap coming out? Of My next door neighbor actually right there is a, is a music dude as well, he's a bass player, like a, a reggae bass player, and he, mm -hmm. had, he had something to do with the the song I like to move it, move it by Real to Real. Mm -hmm. So nice. he actually like bangs on the wall when he likes a beat, and he's like cool. So I, I like it's basically like winning the lottery with your neighbor because it's never an issue. Like he's mm -hmm. totally cool. So we were actually talking about how you were on my favorite Master Ace tape, A Long Hot Summer. Right. Um, what did I know? He was on. Uh, he was on Port Authority too. Mm -hmm. What What is? What's your? Can you describe your relationship with Master? Uh, with the Ace. The best way to say, first of all, to be clear, Master Ace changed my life mm -hmm. by picking that beat. Uh, then he did Nostalgia for me, which is on my first album, which some would say is my most popular song. It's got two plus million views on YouTube. Uh, and then he started taking me around the world, and I DJ for him and on his show, and I've been to many different continents with that man he's been on double barrel with Torre. He was, he's now on pa2 the director's cut yeah you know what i'm saying i produce on the emc album so shouts to master ace like that's the homie the big brother mm -hmm. and uh you know he's a legend and he definitely influenced and changed my career for the better so speaking of pa2 the director's cut um you have tragedy Gaddafi. Mm -hmm. you have mc8 Mm -hmm. You know, who, you know, I asked, you know, I, was it your first time? You said you've worked with him many times, and his profile has actually exploded since that Kendrick Lamar feature. Can you tell me about the song that you have at MC8 and some of the work that you guys have done together in the past? Yeah, first of all, shouts to DJ Premier. He's the one that linked me with MC8. I sent him beats. He started recording to a bunch of them. Um, then I reached out to 8, and I was like, hey, man, let's do something for my project. He dropped two verses to the, the song that's now called West Coast Love on PA2. Mm -hmm. And then I reached out to my boy Stylistic, who hooked me up with King T, who did the hook in the third verse. And that actually, that song came together quicker than any song on PA2. It was, it was magical how that shit happened. Sometimes things just fall into place. Mm -hmm. and yeah, man, it's a fucking honor and a blessing to be able to work with a West Coast legend like 8 and King T. So shouts to them. It's definitely one of my favorites on the album. Now, I remember you said that uh, that working with Large Professor was kind of that one moment where you're sitting next to your friend like, is this really happening? Yeah. <laughs> my boy, my boy Theo, Theo Bark was here. Uh, shouts to Theo. Um, he was in this room with me when Large Professor came through to record the Radar, which is the first song we did mm -hmm. on Port Authority, and yeah, we were like two little kids, like, he's over there recording his vocals, he's rhyming, killing it, and we're like giggling in here, like, holy fuck, Large Bro's in there killing it, mm -hmm. and yeah, and the rest is history with Large, because yeah. I've been the only outside producer, if you notice, on his last two solo albums, it's all Large Professor beats, and always one Marco Polo beat, I don't know how that's happened, but I appreciate it, shouts <laughs> to you Large, you're the man. <laughs> hey, dreams do come true. Yep. And he was here not too long ago, I saw on your Instagram, you know? Yeah, he was here the other day. We shot a, a, a making of PA2 video, basically where everyone just roasts me. So that's going to be, <laughs> look for the roasting of Marco Polo, PA2, the director's cut, the making of, uh, yeah. in about, yeah, in a couple weeks. 
So we were talking earlier that there is a huge difference between the new Port Authority and Port Authority yes. 2 Director's Cut. Absolutely there is a difference. Right here, New Port Authority 2, I gave this album, everyone's calling it a mixtape this year, which I get it, but it's an actual <laughs> album. It has interludes and intro, it's fully mixed and mastered, and it's you know it has features like Rakim, Big Daddy Kane, Little Fame, Tragedy, Malcolm and Martin, um, Large Professor, First Division. And this album came out for free, I believe it was in uh, April or May. Mm -hmm. Has nothing to do with this album. This is a completely separate album that drops November 12th. Just because some people I noticed, and it's my fault because I called it New Port Authority. <laughs> and, and then Port, Port Authority. Authority. Yeah. But that's because if you know my stuff, before Port Authority 1 dropped, I had a, a mixtape with Mick Boogie yeah. called New Port Authority. Mm -hmm. So that's why everyone thinks it's a mixtape. So it's my own fault because... Newport Authority 2, you would think is a mixtape because the first one was a mixtape, but this is a fucking album yeah. that you can purchase on vinyl and CD. Uh, Slice of Spice is releasing the triple LP for PA2 on December 10th. It's going to be crazy. Mm -hmm. it's super boutique, fancy packaging. It's just like, yeah. yeah, it's like a vinyl junkie's wet dream, the stuff that Slice of Spice does. And check out all their shit, at, you know, on the on the website. They're putting out so much dope shit. I'm going to put these down now. That's but fine, I'm But I'm glad I got a chance to clarify. Mm -hmm. And while we're here, and I also released Hannibal Stacks and Marco Polo Sees the Day this year, which is another a album. busy year. Yeah, Hannibal Stacks from Gangstar Foundation. Definitely check this project. I did all the beats, some... Some hardcore Brooklyn shit, and I'm proud. So yeah, three albums this year. The third one's about to drop November 12th. Yeah. That's my pride and joy. That's the one I've been working on for almost five years. Five years. But I asked you before, are we going to see another Dumb Bout? It's very possible. Very Shouts possible. to Torre. We've been talking about it. It's just, it's all about timing, scheduling. And getting and, into that. Yeah, getting into the thing. zone. You know, more for me in the beats, because nothing's going to happen until I make double barrel beats, and I have to go back into that zone which was very aggressive and angry. And I'm pretty happy these days. So something, have a cat. I have a cat now. <laughs> Life has really changed. <laughs> Life has changed ever you since. You have a little ever, more responsibility. Ever since yeah, Misha yeah. showed up, it's got, you know, yeah, but yeah. yeah. So she's going to have to get scared and the gunshots are going to have to come out and the double barrel zone will be entered. But um, whether that happens or not, me and Tori always going to work on music. So shout out to Tori, who I believe is in Europe right now. Wow. Yeah. That's good. Traveling so, the world. Hey, I want to thank you so much. Yeah, really, man. Thanks much. for talking no, to me. No, no problem. It. No problem. Make sure you guys pick up Port Authority 2 Direct. PA, <laughs> director's Cut. PA2. PA2, the Director's, director's cut, cut. Narrated by Michael Rappaport, by the way. <laughs> just, to, just to throw a wild card at you. <laughs> hey, he's been doing a lot of hip-hop stuff. Especially yeah, man, he did that, the, the uh, tri yeah, yeah, that was epic. But he's a hip-hop head, and he's like yeah. me. He's white. He's, he's a New York head. He's white and nerdy and loves hip-hop. So he was the perfect voice to represent me on the record shouts to you michael rap before you're not really nerdy i'm nerdy but shouts to you brother thank you for being part of the project and shouts to dj booth you guys always show love and post all my shit and i appreciate that hey, so thank you it's only good hip -hop. appreciate That's it that's what we do good hip-hop jacques morel eric sicordio behind the leads outside the booth marco polo we're out peace